when God's name comes up, there's so many different things that we think. God can sometimes feel like he's so far away, like he's letting us handle life on our own. But as we look through the Bible and we look at the nature of God, we see the different people and different relationships with God and there's a simple theme about God's side of our relationship. His love pursues our hearts. His grace pursues our faults. And His hope pursues our doubt. God is active, God is alive, and God is aware. You are pursued. Well, good morning. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to the heart. I'm so Glad that you guys are here today. Uh, my name is Dominic. I'm the leader here uh, at The Heart. And I wanted to say before we did anything else this morning, I want to talk to you just for a moment about water baptism. Every couple of months, we, uh, we take the time to, uh, to go down to the river, and there's a bunch of us that go out there, and uh, there's a few people that, uh, that decide they want to be water baptized. And we have a few people coming out today, a few people that are ready to declare out loud to the world, well, to San Marcos, really. Uh, we don't broadcast it worldwide or anything, but there's something about declaring your faith, saying, I'm ready to follow Jesus, I'm ready to be on this journey with God. And when you declare that out loud, when you say that out loud through a water baptism, that, that, that action that you take can become a milestone in your faith that you can look back on and say, man, I, if I ever forget what God is doing, I can go back to my water baptism and say, no, no, I knew exactly what God was doing. He was changing my life. And life's going to get crazy on the, along the way, and it's going to get confusing, and it's going to get frustrating sometimes, and it's going to be amazing sometimes. But what we're doing is starting a journey with God. And so if you're signed up for baptism today, we're going to be out there at one. Even if you're not signed up, I want to invite you to come out to this water baptism and be a part of it. We're going to be at Dog Beach. It's along the river, uh, right past all the construction. If you can make it past the construction, we'll water baptize you anyway because that is a journey on itself getting through San Marcos construction. So I want to invite everybody out there uh, at 1 p.m. today to see what life change looks like in the flesh in real life. It's so amazing to be able to be able to experience that. Even if you don't know anyone who's getting baptized, there's something so incredible about seeing life change. So I want to invite you out to that today. Now, before, or, or I guess not before, now, it's now. The time is now. There's no better time than right now. You are in the exact right place you need to be. I'm glad you came to church today. I'm glad that you're here today because we have one of our leaders that's going to be speaking to you today, Crystal Stotzenberger. She has, yeah, yeah, you can get excited for Crystal. It's exciting to have Crystal. Crystal, all these people are so excited for you. Uh, you can come on up. Yeah, so I, I want to I say that we are in this series called Pursued, and in this series, we're going to be digging into what it means that you are pursued by God. You are pursued by God even before you started pursuing him, even before you were interested in him. And we've been taking several weeks to kind of dig into that, and what does that mean? What, why does that matter to you that you are pursued by God? What could that do for your life, for your faith, for your family, for your marriage, for your relationships? So I'm excited for what Crystal has to share with you guys today. I really think it's going to help you. I think you're going to walk out of here different than you came in. I think you're going to walk out of here with tools that you can use to see what God sees in you. So let's welcome uh, Crystal Sotzenberger. Thanks, guys. Good morning, everyone. Hey, raise your hand if you're thinking about getting baptized or if you're planning on it. Anybody? Woo, Michaela, sweet. Um, well, I just want to say thanks for having me. I'm, I'm excited about this message because I feel like it's, it's one that I've personally been on a journey with. And um, last week we talked about Jesus being the expression of God's pursuit of us, right? And to think that a prophetic word um, in the Old Testament, it wasn't enough. God felt a need to send his son here on earth to pursue us in the tangible, to show us what it means to walk in a relationship with Jesus got me thinking, what is the goal of pursuit? Like, what does that mean? And I know in, in my relationship, when I'm pursuing someone, or if you're pursuing a career, something that you're trying to do is you're getting to know someone more. And not just the details about who they are or what they do, but you want to know them, right? And I think that that is the beautiful thing. It's what we're going to talk about today. Because God chooses to pursue us, you are known at the most intimate, detailed level. 
God desires a relationship with you. He knows the depths and details of you, but he wants a deep relationship. So that's what we're going to talk about. And before we dive into that, you guys, I want to share, share a story. My husband, Marcus, he's, he's sitting right over here. And when we first started, yeah, you can woohoo him. He's handsome. Um, so when Marcus and I started dating, um, I knew some details about him. I knew that he loved to work out. I knew that he ate three things, eggs, oatmeal, and green beans. That was it. So easy enough for me when it was time to cook when we were dating, right? And he knew some details about me right off the bat. He knew that I was in the military. I loved my career. Um, I also loved 90s R&B, not this like later two, yeah, 90s (laughs) R&B. And so he knew some details about me. But as we were dating and as we were getting to know each other, he began to really know who I was. And something that makes my husband feel known um, and that I've learned over time is that he really values my undivided attention and affection. Life can get busy, but when we're in a conversation and I have put my phone down and I listen to him, that makes him feel known. And there's things that he will do for me that makes me feel known. For instance, when I start to uh, lose my confidence in, you know, whatever I'm doing, leadership or at my job, when I start to feel like, man, I don't even know what I'm doing, he'll elevate me. He knows what's to say to remind me of who I am and why I'm doing what I'm doing, and that makes me feel known. It also makes me feel known when he irons my pants because he knows that I can't do that. And so when I wake up in the morning, if my clothes are ironed, then that makes me feel known. What in your life, what in your relationships makes you feel known? So that's what we're going to talk about today. And there's so much with that. Um, You know, something else, this is funny, quick story. Something else that makes me feel known is Um, There are people in my life who know I have an irrational fear of being late. So if I'm going to a meeting, I mean, it's it's crazy. If I'm two seconds late, I'm just like, forget it, fire me. I shouldn't even be here. Um, So I'll get to a meeting, and my friends that know that that's truly an anxiety for me, they'll calm my nerves when I get there. It's like, it's okay. We'll continue with this meeting. Um, And then there's a story about Matt that I want to tell you real quick. So I go to, uh, this is funny, I'm just going to pick on you for a second. So uh, Matt and I had a meeting on Friday, and I'm running a little late car line at school, you know what I mean? Um, It was behind, so if I miss that by two minutes, I'm late to a meeting. And so I text Matt, and I'm like, hey, man, I'm running a little bit late. I'm on my way. And he goes, great. I'm glad God wasn't late to the crucifixion. And it just made me laugh so hard. Um, It made me laugh so hard. But, you know, when you're in a relationship and you are um, learning about someone, you get to know these details. And There's something so cool. Um, You might not have stories just like mine, but in your life there are moments where maybe you have friends or you're at work or there's online comments and and someone's, um, I don't know, praising you or talking about you. And in the back of your head you say, if you only knew, right? If you only knew what I struggle with. There are things that make us feel as if we are not known, One of those is if we feel like we're lonely or we're hidden or we're in a struggle by ourselves. Some of us, we don't feel known because we have these pasts that keep us in a prison. Maybe it's an addiction or a divorce. And because of these past mistakes that you feel that you've been walking, you don't feel known. Um, You know, and so those things can keep us separated from a relationship with God. And because of Jesus, because of his pursuit, we don't have to stay captured in that. So David, we're going to camp out in Psalms 139. If you have your U version or your Bible, go ahead and pull that out. We're going to sit here for a while because this psalm, it was written by David. And I want to tell you a little bit about David. Most of you probably know the story of David and the Goliath, he defeated this giant with a small rock. Um, David was also someone that God groomed as a a shepherd when he was very, very young. He became a king. Um, David also, he is someone who slept with a woman and intentionally sent someone out to battle knowing that they were going to be murdered. There were all of these crazy details about David. 
And in Psalm 139, um, David was a fierce leader. Like, he was known for going to battle and winning in the name of God. And in Psalm 139, we don't know this for sure, but it could be said that he may have written this psalm right in the middle of a battle, right in the middle of a time where there was difficulty and there was death and he was sending these men that he loved into battle. And this psalm is truly an expression. It's an echo of David's heart of how mindful God is of us, of how much he loves us and how much he pursues us despite or in spite of every single detail. And so we're going to talk about that. We're going to kind of go verse by verse here, and I want to read it to you. So it starts off by saying, Lord, you know everything there is to know about me. You perceive every moment of my heart and soul, and you understand my every thought before it even enters my mind. You are so intimately aware of me, Lord. You read my heart like an open book, and you know all the words I'm about to speak before I even start a sentence. Sometimes who we know matters so much more than what we know. Better yet, sometimes who knows us, it matters so much more than what they know about us. Have you ever had a job and you're in your, your career and you're like, how did I get here? And maybe there was a friend that invited you into this place and they believed in you, they believed in the intention, or the, uh, intention of your heart and what you were capable of. That's what David is saying here. He's saying, God, you are so aware of who I am. You know me. He's professing this out. We're going to continue. He says, you know, every step I will take before my journey even begins, you've gone into my future to prepare the way. And in kindness, you follow behind me. Now, in some versions of the Bible, it will say, you hem me in. It means you go before and after. It means that no matter what is in your future or what you've done in your past, God is walking right beside you. There is nothing that you've done or that you can do that will separate his love for you. It says, to spare me from the harm of my past with your hand of love Upon my life, you impart a blessing to me. This is just too wonderful, too deep, too incomprehensible. Your understanding of me brings me wonder and strength. And in some versions, um, there's a, a Hebrew, Hebrew phrase that just talks about this is too incomprehensible. I still don't understand how this God of the universe loves me, not just us as humanity, individually, every single one of us, he counts the hairs on your head, he knows exactly the words that are in your heart, and he chooses you over and over again. It's amazing. So in this next part, it says, where could I go from your spirit? Where could I run and hide from your face? If I go up to heaven, you're there. If I go down to the realm of the dead, you're there too. If I fly with wings into the shining dawn, you're there. If I fly into the radiant sun, you're there waiting. Wherever I go, your hand will guide me. Your strength will empower me. It's not just that God is everywhere. It's that he's everywhere with you. How amazing is that? And in this particular spot, when he starts out and he says that um, the, let's go back a little bit. He talks about um, where could I run from your face? This isn't David saying, I'm trying to get away from you. It's saying that you are near me, that you walk right beside me everywhere I go. My daughter, she's somewhere in the back. She's seven. And from the time she could walk until right now, there is nowhere that I go that she's not right beside me. If you're a parent and you're like trying to go to the bathroom, your kids have their hands underneath the stall, or yeah, the stall, wherever you're at, public or at home, they're always right behind you. They're close. They want to lean into you, and that's exactly how God perceives you. That's the type of relationship that he wants to have with you. There is no such thing as darkness with you. This isn't up there, but I'm going to read it to you. The night to you is as bright as the day. There's no difference between the two. You formed my innermost being, shaping my delicate inside and my intricate outside, and you wove them all together in my mother's womb. I thank you, God, for making me so mysteriously complex. 
Now, most of you, maybe you've heard the phrase that God makes us fearfully and wonderfully made. And when I see that word fearfully, I always used to think like, hmm, what does that mean? I don't know why. I I just didn't quite understand it, right? Fearfully. And um, when you translate that, when you look at that, there's a word, and it's yada, and it's in the Hebrew. And in our culture right now, when we think of fearfully, we may think like distance or running or to defend. But this word yada, that's not what it means. It means love. It means to cover. It means to serve. And um, another word that you could replace that with is reverence. So God makes us um, just reverently and wonderfully made. He's not fearful of us, and there's nothing that we have to fear of him or ourselves. Everything you do is marvelously breathtaking. It simply amazes me to think about it. How thoroughly you know me, Lord. You even formed every bone in my body when you created me in the secret place or the depths of the earth. Carefully, skillfully shaping me from nothing to something, you saw who you created before I became me. He knew who you were going to be. He knows everything about you before we ever stepped or were born into this earth. And there is something I wrote down on this, so I want to read it to you. Let's see. It's not just that God knows everything. He knows you. And there are times in life, I've been in a season recently, where I've almost felt like I was going through the motions I'm in a space right now where I have a good job, have an amazing family, we're finally financially secure, and still sometimes I feel a little empty. And there's a part of me that wonders, why do I feel this way? Why can I not just be happy with where I'm at right now? And what I've realized and what wrecks me is that sometimes I'm looking towards the outward circumstance to fulfill something that only God can fulfill. And he can only fulfill that, although he is there at all time, he can only fulfill that if we have an invitation to him. Like David, at the end of this psalm, we're going to jump over to 23. This is the invitation. David says, God, I invite your searching and gaze into my heart. Now, David knows that God is already aware of everything that is in his heart, but still he chooses to ask God to search him, and that can be a dangerous and beautiful prayer. For you to ask God, strip away everything. Strip away the titles and the accolades and what I think I'm supposed to be doing and search my heart because I want to follow you. He continues, examine me through and through. Find out everything that may be hidden within me. Put me to the test and sift through all my anxious cares. See if there is any path of pain I'm walking on. Is there anything in my life that's causing me brokenness? Is there anything in my life that I keep investing my time in other than you that is causing me to feel like I'm not enough or like a failure? Social media can do that to us, right? We're constantly gazing and and scrolling through the details of someone else's life and we feel like that's where I should be. I'm 35 and I should have this and that because this person, it's a misconception, right, if we compare ourselves. And he continues, and lead me back to your glorious everlasting ways, the path that brings me back to you. He's saying, find me right where I am in this moment and take me where only you can take me, where I can only go with a relationship with you. I'm going to drink some water. Dom said it's okay to tell people you do that. That's what you got to do, right? Knowing someone and becoming known can be strengthened with that invitation. Had I not walked through these past eight years with my husband, if we hadn't maybe sat in a few counseling chairs and truly divulged how we were feeling to allow the other person to know us, we wouldn't be at this point that we are now in our marriage. And and that's a continuous pursuit. It's a continuous desire to dig deeper into what God has for us. 
And I want to continue to do that in my relationship. I want the type of relationship that David has with God in this psalm. The entire time in Psalm 139, he is speaking directly to God. We see David using I, and that's not always typical in Scripture. But he's telling God, this is how I feel about you, and I know this is how you feel about me. What does that look like for you? Is there an area in your life, is there a relationship where you need to extend an invitation to go deeper? I know there are for me. There's relationships that I disconnect and I run away from because I'm scared to be known. Because I'm scared if that other person knows that I struggle with this, if that other person knows that I have panic attacks over these, or sometimes I feel I'm not enough, will they still want to be my friend? Will they still want to be in a relationship with me? But God knows you at the deepest of your core, and he still wants a relationship with you. What could your life look like differently if you made a choice to lean into that? What could our community look like differently if we made a choice to lean into that, right? You guys, we have some time, but I just want to take a moment to pray over you. If you bow your head with me. God, I thank you for this day. God, I pray that in this moment right now, Lord, that you would search our hearts, that you would allow us to see more of who you are. God, that with all the details aside, that you would make us known in this moment by you and your presence, God, that you would make us known in this community, that we would know we're not hidden, that there's nowhere that we can go that you're afraid to venture into. God, I pray over every single person here. I pray over marriages. I pray over finances, Lord. I pray that they would intimately know that they're, they are important to you, that they are valued. God, and that you're right beside them and you're ready at any moment. And you're there regardless. Search our hearts, God. Let us lean into you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, I wrote something down that Crystal said, and you, you should have wrote it down if you didn't. It was one of the scriptures she quoted. It was Psalm 139, verse 6. It said, your understanding of me brings me wonder and strength. I wrote that down and circled it and highlighted it and scratched on it. There's something about God knowing us that brings us a sense of wonder. It makes us alive. It makes us able to see when we know that God knows us. There's a strength that comes when we are known by God because we all of a sudden realize that it's not us on our own anymore. So when we see that God knows us, when we see that we are pursued by God, we come alive and we are strengthened. I know that some of you walked in here and you don't feel alive. You feel like you're just going through life. Some of you feel like I could use some strength. I got beat up this week. I got beat up emotionally. I got beat up mentally. I got beat up at work. I got beat up in my family. But if you allow yourself to be known by God, that's an invitation that Crystal was talking about. It's an invitation allowing God to know you. Because it's one thing to say that God knows all about you and God sees everything and God's everywhere and he is. But it only matters to you, like Crystal said, it only matters to you if you let him know you. That's what she said. She said it doesn't matter that God, it's not so much that God knows everything because he does. But it's that he knows you. That's what makes all the difference here. That's what makes all the difference. And I wrote this down too. She said, when we invite God to know us, I don't know if she said this or if like, I just heard it. If, when we invite God to know us, we're able to see that we are known. And that's the only time it will matter is if you let yourself see that you were known by God. So I want to give you an opportunity this morning. Close your eyes one more time. 
I want to give you an opportunity to be known by God today. Maybe you've never been known by God. You've been running from God your whole life. Maybe you've been running from God this year. You feel like the mistakes that you've made and the things that you've said and the things that you've done keep you away from God. And you're saying, well, 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 maybe if I just fix those, maybe if I just get my life right, maybe if I just start saying the right things, maybe if I do the right stuff, maybe if I go to church for about four more times, then I'll be good with God. Well, I want to let you know exactly what Crystal was telling you is that you were known. And I want, to, I want to give you a chance to let God know you today, right now, in this moment. In the middle of your mess, not after your mess. And if you're ready to be known by God today, on the count of three, I want you to raise your hand. Now, if you already know God and you've been in a relationship with God, but there's still parts of your heart that you're holding back that you feel like, I- I'm not sure I want God to know that yet. I'm not sure I, I want to let that go. I'm not sure I'm ready to forgive that person or, or release that or-, or-, or you still have that anxiety or depression or whatever it is that you're holding on to. I want to give you a chance today to invite God in even more. Invite God further into your heart, into the darkest corners of your heart that you've been keeping away from him because you're embarrassed or whatever it is. Invite him to know you more this morning so when you walk out of here, you walk out of here known. So if you're ready to allow God to know you, to start a relationship with him, to, to get invested with him, to do that today for the first time, on the count of three, raise your hand. And if, you're, if you want to let God know you more, and you're going to allow him to know more of who you are. Then on the count of three, raise your hand as well. Let's do it. One, two, three. Put your hands up right now. Put your hands up so I can see them. Okay, put them down. Put them down. I'm going to pray for you real quick. God, thank you so much for the people who are raising their hands, God, for the bravery, for the boldness. I pray that when we walk out of here, God, we are known. We, are, we know that we are known. We are able to let you see us. And through that, God, that would open our eyes to wonder. That would open our eyes to being more alive, and to be strengthened by your pursuit. We love you, God. Amen.